the Chicago Sting. Professional soccer at its most exciting. And the Sting treated its fans to a season of thrills. Goals over 50 in all. Corner kicks. Headers. Saves. Penalty kicks. And free kicks. Spills, tackles, passes, and throw-ins. Yes, the Chicago Sting did it all and brought Chicago a divisional championship and a professional sports playoff game, the first time this old town had seen one in an outdoor sport in many, many years. Let's make a few stops along the road to the Sting's championship. The march to the division title was in full swing on that stormy night that the great Pelé and the New York Cosmos came to Soldier Field. Edson Aratis de Nascimento, the most famous soccer star in the world, and nearly 30,000 soccer fans, Chicago's largest soccer crowd ever, braved torrential pre-game rainstorms to be there. They came to watch Pelé, but they went home talking about the sting. They roared their approval as Jimmy Kelly put the sting in front. They marveled at Pelé, the master, who brings skill and artistry to the game as no other has ever done. Pelé, the king, the standard for close to one million young people playing soccer in the United States this year, and over double that figure next year. And the great one left no doubt who was putting the kick into American soccer. But despite Pelé, the night was all sting as they bombarded the Cosmos goal three more times. The final score of four to one gave the Sting their fifth straight home win and the fans a thrilling night of super soccer. July's sweltering heat found the Sting equally red hot. With a non-stop devastating attack, the Sting blasted Hartford by a record-breaking score of seven to one. The Sting intoxicated a delighted crowd. They simply couldn't miss. At the half, the Sting led four to nothing. When you're a young soccer fan and you're watching your team perform heroics, you've got to get an autograph or two. The youth involvement in soccer is something of which the players are very much aware. They know that over 60,000 Chicagoland youngsters playing soccer today will be the dedicated soccer fans of tomorrow. And when you put on a show like this, a breathtaking hat trick by Jeff Davies, a pinpoint pass from one teenage sensation to another, Miro Reese setting up a header by John Lowy, and a final seventh goal to break the team record, championship soccer all the way, you're going to bring back soccer fans young and old. In August, wearing the North Division crown, the Sting went into playoff action against the tough Toronto Metros. It was a tightly played seesaw game throughout. Toronto scored first, but John Kowalik tied it up. A go-ahead goal by Toronto was answered by the Sting, sending the game into sudden death overtime. During the first sudden death period, Gene Geimer headed one in, but the goal was disallowed on an offsides call. Sting suffered another damaging blow when goalkeeper Merv Coston was forced out with an injury. 
the stage was set for the nail-biting penalty kick tiebreaker. There were goals and saves. More goals and misses. But in the end, it was to be Toronto's victory, thus ending the Sting season and launching the Toronto Metros all the way to the 1976 North American Soccer League Championship. Now, let's meet some of the stars of the division champion Chicago Sting. John Kowalik, a forward and the team's number one striker. Playing the middle in front of the opponent's goal, John receives passes from the wingers, the forwards who play on each side and tries to convert those passes into goals. With skill and experience earned by many years of world-class competition, Kowalik was the team's leading scorer, although hampered by injuries throughout much of the 1976 season. Kowalik, a star now and in the future. Team captain Alex Gatarek came out of Chicago's Lane Tech High School, starred at Michigan State University, and is a standout on the United States World Cup team. As a defender, Skatarek's job is to turn aside the opposition's offensive thrusts and get the Sting attack going upfield. Alex Skatarek, a 90-minute player who gives maximum effort every second. The Sting net was well tended all season long by Mervyn Coston, popularly called Mervyn the Magician. As the only player on the field who can use his hands, Coston performed brilliantly, allowing only 29 goals throughout the season. It's hard to describe the excitement of a teenager fresh out of Morton East High School who steps right into the professional soccer ranks. But Miro Reese did just that, and he displayed his talent so well that he's been selected for the United States national team. He proved he was deserving of the honor by scoring an important goal in America's first bid for a World Cup berth. An exciting performer, Reese scored the Sting's first regular season goal against Tampa. You'll be seeing a lot more of Miro in the world of professional soccer. When it comes to midfielders, the name of Jimmy Kelly comes to the fore. Aggressive, agile, and talented, Kelly has a knack for being where the ball is and taking command. The experts predict Kelly will become one of the game's superstars. Kelly regularly found the net during the 1976 season. As with this goal against New York, showing the crowd what is meant when the field announcer says, here comes Kelly. One of the Sting's most valuable players is Benny Alon, who did a yeoman job at whatever position he was asked to play, defender, midfielder, or forward. Here's defender George Lamptey and center back Clive Griffiths, a solid man all season. And this is John Webb, one of the league's leading fullbacks. Alan Waldron, midfielder. Lammy Robertson, midfielder. Jeff Davies, forward. John Lowy, forward. And Tom Redmond, a defender chosen by the Sting in the college player draft. It takes a coach to hold a soccer team together. And the Sting's Bill Folks is a man who coaches winners. Folks, a soccer legend in his native England, has built the Sting into a championship team in just two seasons. And in 1977, he's planning to take them all the way. Yes, soccer has come to Chicago in a big way with the Chicago Sting. And more and more people are discovering. They're discovering soccer's non-stop action that pits speed against stamina, skill against aggressiveness. When you watch soccer, you'll see the individual talents required to dribble a ball through a group of defenders. And you'll see the courage it takes to tackle the ball away from the opponent. You'll see excitement at the goal mount and in the middle of the field. You'll see corner kicks, free kicks, and a few kicks that aren't allowed. You'll see excitement on the field, and you'll feel it in the stands. Yes, professional soccer is an exciting experience for the whole family. It's a sport that has captured and held the enthusiasm of people the world over. In fact, 10 times as many people watch the World Cup games on TV as the largest Super Bowl TV audience ever recorded. And now, soccer is here in the Chicago area for you to enjoy. What you will see are superbly conditioned athletes. 
Men capable of running seven to nine miles per game. Athletes who have dominated the TV superstars competition. Athletes that represent the kind of sportsmanship that your own son or daughter should and will emulate. Professional soccer is here. In the coming season, put Sting in your life. See you at the Chicago Sting Games. See you at the Chicago Sting Games. The battle continued against the Chicago Sting and this their seventh game. Opposing coaches have begun to fear the blizzard. There were some weak spots in the team, but slowly, with Eddie filling the gaps with astute recruiting, the club was taking shape. Well, you know what kind of a dismal start we had. You know, we were 7-0, and I think everybody thought, here we go again, this franchise is not going to last very long, you know? But then we started to turn it around, the team started to knit together. We got some key players in Jimmy Bowen and Ivan Lukacevic. From there on, we started rolling. The arrival of Jim Bone from Scotland added teeth to the blizzard attack, and the team was getting hungry. Here against Tulsa, with two minutes to go, midfielder Drew Busby started the charge with a goal. Lorimer, Bone, Busby, victory. Ivan Lukacevic, the man they call Big Luke, showed his strength in the air and his scoring prowess to the Atlanta Chiefs. 24 minutes into the game, he had two goals. Lukacevic provided the missing ingredient in the Toronto attack, both on the ground and in the air, and was the best in the league with his head. Patrick. Facing Washington, high-flying Big Luke lifted the fans from their seats again. The blizzard had come together. You know, we keep doing a lot of good recruiting and we come up with some good players. When you get to one and seven, you start to wonder, maybe we're judgment's not good enough, but I'll give him Keith credit. We hung in there with the players. Lukasiewicz came, made a big difference to us. And all of a sudden, we have a up on a 50-50 basis or a 500 basis. 2-0, another shutout for the blizzard. The blitz was on. Toronto fans began to see the skills of the best in the game. Some of the world's finest players are now playing in the North American Soccer League. Stars such as Franz Beckenbauer, Carlos Alberto, Alan Ball, Mourinho, George Best. And here, the man regarded as the most brilliant attacking player in soccer. Number 14, Johan Cruyff of the Los Angeles Aztecs showed his stuff. Toronto's Peter Lorimer, not to be outdone, demonstrates his brilliance. Lorimer. Lukacevic. Gibbs. More than 20,000 supporters turned out to see non-stop excitement. Jim Bones strikes and scores. And Ivan Lukacevic and Evi Air use their heads to connect again. A 3-1 lead gives the blizzard a lift. 
But the drama isn't over. The Aztecs come back with two goals to tie the game and force sudden death overtime. Captain Colin Frank shoots. Save. George Gibbs. Slams home the rebound to end it 4-3. Two nights later against the New England team, and Lukacevic shows he can do more than just head the ball. Keelan upends Toronto's Ebayer, and the Blizzard get a penalty kick. The man they call Thunderfoot, Peter Larimer, shows why. But this time, it's a 2-1 loss. San Diego is the opponent, and this time, Larimer is dragged down in the penalty box. There is no stopping his 90-mile-an-hour shot. But it's a different story on Big Luke's attack. From a poor start of one win in eight games, the Blizzard even their record at 10 and 10 before a rain-swept crowd with a 2-1 victory over San Diego. The breaks were going Toronto's way at last. A 2-1 win over the Vancouver Whitecaps and a 3-0 shutout over the Rochester Lancers set up a pivotal return game against the Lancers. Cliff Calvert's goal left the teams tied 1-1 after regulation time. The Blizzard pressed in overtime but failed to break the deadlock. now was down to a shootout. Toronto lost two previous shootouts, but not this one. The Blizzard attempt to fell the Portland Timbers, and Lorimer cracks one in off the goalpost. The playoffs were looming, and the Blizzard fighting Rochester and the Seattle Sounders for a wild card berth began to falter. One thing characterized this fledgling team, they fought to win, and they fought to entertain their fans. The last game we played here against Portland, I remember it well, the, the fans were tremendous. They were cheering, they were stamping their feet. And this gets to players, I'm a big believer, they got good home fans, it's good for one goal. It's shootout time again with a score tied 2-2, and the Blizzard lose a 3-2 heartbreaker before their devoted fans. Now, in the final regular season game, they are confronted with the tallest order of the year to beat Philadelphia and score at least three goals. It was a sight to behold. Down 1-0 early in the game. Then trailing 2-0 after less than 20 minutes had passed. They were dead. Or were they? Come on, let's go! Come on, we're playing! Come on, we're playing! They began the charge with Coach Keith Eddy and the full force of 22,500 fans behind them. Come on, let's go! Lukacevic is down and the crowd is anxious. But the Blizzard's leading striker is up again and a penalty Coach shot Peter. is called against Philadelphia. Peter! Lorimer takes the shot. And the Blizzard trail by a goal at intermission. A special feature of Blizzard halftime shows involves youngsters, the players and fans to whom the Blizzard have pledged their support. 
Minor soccer across Canada has grown annually at the rate of 20% a year, far and away the fastest growing game in the country. In the Toronto area alone, there are more than 30,000 young soccer players registered in leagues. Perhaps among them will be the Blizzard stars of the future.